Let's drink apple cider. To something good. Apparently, Rent a Girlfriend Chapter 218 was so bad that y'all gave it one Ooh. star on the popular manga reading website mangakakalot.com. Were there no good memories of this series? Since Reiji Miyajima is taking a break this week from Rent a Girlfriend, I figured for my weekly Rent a Girlfriend video, I would take some time to talk about some really positive moments in the series. Before I get into some of the reasons that I fell in love with this series, I just want to ask you the question. Why do you like Rent-A-Girlfriend? Or why, why did you get into it? How did you read up to chapter 218 in the first place? There has to be a reason. So today, I want to talk about those reasons. By the way, for those of you who've been keeping up with the channel for a while, thank you so much. If you're new here, the subscribe button isn't going to hurt you. Go ahead and click subscribe and come back every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm planning on uploading brand new Rent-A-Girlfriend content every week. Uh, there's going to be a little bit more of a schedule being announced soon, but I want to go ahead and just say, hey, guaranteed Rent-A-Girlfriend content every week until it ends, or unless I let you know otherwise. But anyways, back to the video. If any of you asked me, why did you fall in love with Rent-A-Girlfriend? I would tell you that I found this series at one of the darkest points in my entire life. A girl that I'd fallen in love with a few years ago dumped me after a month. I thought I was in love with her, and it turns out that I was nothing but a tool for her. I wasn't anything special. I was left alone. And, uh, I was going through a really, really, really hard time. This is about two years ago. And uh, I was covering Domestic Girlfriend on the channel, but a lot of people were talking about Rent a Girlfriend, Rent a Girlfriend, Rent a Girlfriend. Never heard of this series, but I decided to take a look. And I immediately related with Kazuya a lot. Mommy just turned around out of nowhere, broke up with him. And we have this guy who's doing the best he can in life. He's going to school. He's, he's a kid. He's studying. He's trying his best. He thought he was a good boyfriend. And he just got dumped. And he was alone and depressed. And he felt miserable. He felt like a complete loser. That was me. And then he meets Mizuhara, this beautiful woman that almost anybody would want to be with. And of course, he was interested. And that means that I was interested in, in, in following this, this schmuck story. I figured he must learn something, right? I'm not going to talk about what ended up happening, but that's the first reason that I was really into Rent-A-Girlfriend. But I'm going to get into some of the actual highlight moments from the story. And I also want to take a moment to commend Reiji Miyajima on his art. His art is just beautiful. I love it. There are some scenes that just... They look so amazing. Remember when Chizuru Mizuhara stepped into your life? Right here, the first panel. I love this panel. She's, she's just so beautiful and it's hard to, to overlook. Just feeling, you know, if you can relate with Kazuya as well, feeling the way that he felt, being so dumped and alone, and then seeing his rental girlfriend appear on screen for the first time. It's incredible. Now, the next one for me doesn't really come up until chapter 52, but um, I think Reiji does a really good job of communicating how Chizuru is feeling after failing the audition. You know, she's wearing her hat, 
She's trying her best, obviously, but I mean, she says to Kazia, I'm not good enough. I lack talent. It's not just the art that's amazing. I mean, look at her hair, the hat, the clothes, I mean, the shadows, Kazia's eyes, everything about this spread is beautiful. But, you know, this is one of the first times that we see Mizuhara become vulnerable in front of Kazuya. Which is why, I mean, obviously, 164 is huge. It's the buildup of this, these sprinklings of Mizuhara's true emotions in her heart. In this next chapter, we have Mizuhara sulking in her bedroom. I remember this scene like it was yesterday. I will never forget how this panel communicates the despair that's in Mizuhara's heart from the darkness that this shows. And artistically, I want to talk about why uh, this communicates so powerfully. Chizuru is, has her head buried in her hands towards the corner in darkness while the light pours in on the opposite side of the page. And this indicates that she's really depressed. And I, I just think that the play between light is incredible here. Look at how the script she's holding is drooping slightly. How her face is hidden. And how her hat is no longer on her head, which was indicating, you know, what she looked like during her performance, her star performance, that was supposed to be her big chance. She takes the hat off and she puts it to the side. It's just little details like this that tell a story without having any dialogue other than mm. I know on the page it says sob, but I have the you know official translation. It's in one of these volumes, but you know, the official translation says mm, instead of sob. But you know, and if you if you look at the calendar, you see that she's been X marks the spot with all these days, so it shows the anticipation that she's had for this audition, which ultimately failed. There's so much to look at this panel, but I I'm gonna stop talking about one panel and continue. We come to my personal favorite chapter in Rent a Girlfriend. Now, I know I said that 164 is obviously the best, but I, I guess I mean that in the fan sense, but for me personally, it's. I'm gonna get emotional here. It's um when Kazi is talking about how everyone is changing around him and he can't figure out how to change. And Sumi holds his hand and uh, says, "Don't worry, I'm also here for you." I can't wait until this comes out in the translation because <laughs> it's Sumi's perfect. And I have been there. I felt like nothing I do will ever help me to change. And I felt alone. And I've had people come and be in my life. <laughs> Reiji is so good in this chapter. This is so wholesome. And, uh... Wasn't expecting to cry, but uh, this panel is really powerful. Um, what did you guys think about this? Man, but ah, this is my personal favorite chapter because I've just, I've been there. I've been where Kazia is um, and having the support of your friends around you when you're going through depression and Having the support of your friends around you when you're feeling like nothing you do will ever work is, it's incredible. I was not expecting that. I need some apple cider after that. In chapter 103, when Mizuhara says, please make my movie. Let her watch it. This is 
incredible art. It's incredible writing, especially as a follow-up to Kazuya's, you know, insistence that he wants to help Mizuhara in whatever way, and she shuts him down immediately. But then he goes away, and he's thinking that, of course, Mizuhara's not going to come to me. But she does. This was a powerful moment. Man, these chapters between, like, 90 and 100, like, oh my gosh, so good. So I'm just going to read five pages of chapter 136 to you guys. Um just to show you why I think the last panel is powerful. So, I used to have a grandpa, but he passed away three years ago. From the very first time I said I wanted to be an actress, he cheered me on, and the two of us made a promise that someday he'd see me make it. But... There was a car accident, and... Anyways, I thought Grandma could stand in for him. And then if I showed her, I felt like maybe if she saw me become an actress, I'd get to Grandpa somehow. But then, Grandma collapsed. And to be honest, in that moment, I thought it was over. I bombed out of basically all my aud auditions, too was starting to wonder if I was out of time. Mizuhara! So, it made me happy. <laughs> when you said, let's make a movie, it, it made me so happy. Peak. Peak. I just like Mizuhara's dress here. I think he did a great job with the dress. And I know y'all are gonna hate me because literally we're making this entire video because 218 was so bad and it got one stars, but okay, I'm using something from chapter 218 and you'll figure out why much a little bit later in the video. But this page of Ruka. Ah! She's so adorable! She's so adorable! Oh! She's just, oh, it's so good. I know the rest of the chapter is terrible, but oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, she looks so adorable. Do I really have to say anything? Do I really have to say anything? Come on. Her name is Sumi Sarakawa? Oh, but I messed up her last name. But her name is Sumi? Moving on, I want to talk about Ruka for a minute because she represents everything. Everything that I want in a relationship. Um, as you know, Maybe you don't know, but uh, I am single boy 101. No matter what I do, rejection all the time. It's just part of life for me. Um, I'm happy, you know, with my friends. I'm surrounded with people that I love. Um, I'm happy with myself for the most part. But when it comes to women, I'm, you know, I get ghosted and rejected a lot, a lot. <laughs> and it's almost like, I don't matter to, you know, the woman that, that I, I happen to be attracted to. So when I see Ruka and how much she loves Kazuya as the imperfect person that he is, Ruka accepts him fully for who he is. She's absolutely beautiful. And she's just so kind to him. She, like, desires him. She thinks about him. To me, like, sometimes I think it's, like, weird when I think about how women have crushes because that doesn't happen to me. So <laughs> it just seems like this foreign alien thing. Um, so, you know, seeing Ruka desire Kazuya is something that, you know, I desire and I, I really like from her. And she's... I'm going to read you a quote from a friend of mine on Discord. 
Geo put it best to describe Ruka. No jealous girlfriend vibes, no blackmailing or mind games involved, just a young teenager being true to herself. Man, true to yourself, authenticity. And you know, there aren't a lot of people nowadays, especially girls that I sense are just, you know, just completely their most authentic selves. It's rare, but it's beautiful when it happens. And Ruka just capitalizes on this so well, and that's why. Ruka gang gang, uh, Sumi is like best girl, okay? No questions, in my opinion. But Ruka is someone that, like, I wish I could have in my life. She's someone that I would want to be friends with. Yeah, maybe she's a little bit crazy stalker ex-girlfriend vibes to some but for me i just see that as her earnesty and i like that so much and the last thing that uh keeps me well this is more keeps me reading rent a girlfriend um what in the world is mommy on about what's going on i mean we know her story from 215 but where is she going with this what does she want? What are her intentions? Mommy is keeping me reading week to week because she's just so interesting. You can think whatever you want about the series, but I really think it'd be hard to argue Mommy's significance and how interesting she is. Because she really is very, very interesting. That being said, I want to know from you. Why do you keep reading Rent a Girlfriend? And why did you fall in love with the series in the first place? And did any could you relate with anything that I said? I certainly hope so. I think um, this series has created it, it's it definitely has a place in my heart. And I want to know more from you in the comment section. What does Rent a Girlfriend mean to you? What are some of the things you like about it? I just think that. There's a lot of bad vibes going on right now uh, in the Rent-A-Girlfriend community, especially because of Chapter 218. But I think that it's really, really important, especially since he's taking a break this week, to kind of take stock of the things that we like. You know, gratitude is so important, guys. This is totally a tangent, but we can be ungrateful and um, entitled and feel like we're not getting exactly what we want in life but it's really important to kind of like look at the things that you do enjoy and look back on the things that you like because if we don't do that then we might end up bitter people and i would rather be grateful for when rent a girlfriend was good than let my disappointment with rent a girlfriend recently <laughs> sort of create uh, this bitterness around me and towards other things as well. Thank you so much for watching. You already know what time it is. Let's get it. Sorry for the abrupt transition. Time to go. But uh, it's time for that trash type. Let's get it. <laughs>